Now that we know something about private and public goods, we can ask the question, why is it that we can't just provide public goods in a way that's analogous to how we provide private goods in competitive markets? Why can't we just figure out people's demand curves and then use those demand curves to figure out the right quantity to produce so that the sum of the marginal benefits is equal to the marginal cost? And then we could simply charge each person a price that's equal to their marginal benefit. Well, in order to do that, we'd have to know what people's demand curves are. People would have to tell us how much they actually want these fireworks that the city is putting up into the sky. That's not an issue in competitive private goods markets. Nobody has to know other people's demand curves. There's simply a price that emerges in the market, and then people just have to know their own demand curve, where their own demand curve crosses that price to set marginal benefit equal to marginal cost. No one has to know anyone else's demand curve. Now, if you had only two people trading a private good, like Basil and Sybil in the early part of the course where they were trading fish for barley, they'd have to figure out prices for fish and barley. And there's no market, because there's only two of them, that has given or set a price. In that case, Sybil and Basil might have an incentive to misrepresent their demand. They might try to get a better price by saying, well, I don't really want the good that much, so let me negotiate a better price than what I might get if I would reveal my true demand for the good that the other person has. But that power to negotiate goes away the more people there are in the market. And once we get to a competitive market, that negotiating power has disappeared. Everybody's a price taker. So everybody just takes that price as given. There's no reason to misrepresent your demand because the only one that's using the demand is you as you determine how much to buy at the price that you have no control over. So the incentive to misrepresent your demand disappears in competitive markets as the number of people in the market increases. What about the case of public goods? Suppose the city came to you and said, how much is your demand for these fireworks we're thinking about putting up? Your answer is going to help determine how big the fireworks are going to be, and it's going to determine your price. If you're the only one in the city that's going to see the fireworks, you actually have no incentive to misrepresent your demand. You actually want to get the right quantity of fireworks up and get a price that you're willing to pay for that quantity. But what if there are two people in the city? Now you're thinking, my answer to the question of how much do I actually want these fireworks is going to help determine the total number of fireworks that are going to be put into the sky. But I'm not the only one who's determining that. The other person is also giving an answer to that question. So I no longer have the sole control over how many fireworks are going to go up. But my answer will determine what price I'm going to get charged. So now I have an incentive to under-report how much I actually want those fireworks to get that price that I'm going to get charged to be lower and enjoy the fireworks that are going to go up in part because of what the other person said. Now multiply that by 10,000. Suppose there are 10,000 people in the city. Each of them is being asked that question. Your impact of how many, on how many fireworks are going to be put up in the sky is very small now. That quantity is going to be determined based on everybody's demand curves. But your answer to the question of how much you want the fireworks will determine the price you get charged. So now you can really underreport your preferences. Just rely on everybody else saying they want the fireworks, say you don't really care about the fireworks, and so you can enjoy them for free. That's what we call the free rider problem. And it gives rise to an incentive to misrepresent your demand, and that incentive increases as the number of people increases. 
So in the private goods setting, when we have lots of people in markets, there's no problem with an incentive of mi misrepresenting your demand to get a better price. You can't. But in the public goods analogous case, where we're trying to figure out what the right prices would be to charge each person, that incentive increases the more people enjoy that public good. Each person ends up wanting to free ride on what everybody else is saying and get charged a low price by misrepresenting how much they say they would like to demand that good.